Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're watching, welcome to Bridging the Gap, episode number 39. 39, brother. Seems like this last week we got started. Yeah, man. Yeah. I want to uh, uh, pat myself on the back a little bit. I, I think I gave you a stock tip last week. I don't know if it was on camera or not, but tell me what you said about that stock tip. He did. He gave me some stock tip, and he'll tell you more about it, uh, less than a pen. And again, I, I'm not real big into those things, but this one had a background, and he'll give you more, that I think in two weeks, that stock has gone up 23%. Two weeks. So we're ahead thus far, but on those penny stocks, things are subject to change without notice. <laughs> uh, give us an insight. Of what was it again, and why did you the, feel good about it? The Oculus? That? Yeah, the, the, yeah. The glasses that uh, Facebook is making or at least partnering with for the metaverse. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the 3D, uh, not 3D, but the, um, what's the proper word? The virtual, virtual reality glasses. Yeah. 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 Uh, again, with Facebook. Announced metaverse and the Oculus glasses are what you use to be in it. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It does. It does. You're talking about a, over a billion users yeah. that have access to the metaverse. Now, to your knowledge, have they actually signed the agreement yet or just talking? Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's signed, sealed, okay. delivered. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, some competitors will start making them eventually. Right. Oh, yeah. Right now, they first... Sometimes being the first is the most important. It can. And like I said before, you know, normally we don't endorse any type of penny stock like that. But if you get something that has a headwind behind it, like a major contract, I know I do have another little stock. I won't call the name of it yet because it's not doing as well as I want it to be. But they're doing some type of uh, global s cell phone satellite stuff. Mm. And they're supposedly signing a major contract with the company. But I'm just waiting. And waiting and waiting. But for the general rule, like we told you before, stay in your big boys, your solid things, and maybe have a couple of thousand dollars into more speculative things, all because you got cash flow. Talk to me why you call it a penny stock, though. Well, because it's anything that's inexpensive, less than a few bucks, they call it a penny, even though it's not a penny. Gotcha. You know, it's what? It's 79 cents now. Yeah, it's less than a dollar. Yeah, and I think I got it at 60 cents about two and a half weeks ago. Got it. So okay. I'm up 19 cents and 19, 20. Yeah. So that's about a 20, 30. That's about 30% return on it. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be all right, man. Yeah. But that's why you need cash flow, guys, because imagine being able to drop three to $5,000 in that. You know, and then you got a basis for doing it, you know, because Facebook likes them. They've done their research and all like that. You've done <laughs> some research on the company itself to drop, let's say, 3000 on it. The most you can lose is three grand, but. That stuff could be ten, twenty, fifty thousand one day. It's happened, but don't make that your main investment strategy. What'd that say right there? All right, something about Meta. What in the words Meta? I Meta know. is Facebook. I changed the name. All right. How many they ship? Two has shipped ten million units. Now again, according to Qualcomm. Now see, that's another thing. Qualcomm has popped up. Qualcomm's does the chips for mm -hmm. them. And they're at about $180. They've really done well. But I'm surprised, though, with that shipment, that it hadn't popped more. I, I agree 100% that yeah. the stock hasn't yeah. went up. And I don't think Meta has really moved. I think some of that is the, the, the probe they were in, the name change, and some things along that line. But, you know, wait and see. You just never know. Because a lot depends on is one thing to ship. And when they start selling and people start raving about it. Uh, it's going to make a difference. So it, it's a done deal. I like that. And that just happened yesterday, by the way. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, those yeah. 10, 10 million just happened yesterday. I love it. I love it. I, I just want another dinner for my, you know. Another dinner. Hey, well, yesterday, you, you did earn your other dinner. Had to take these guys to Ruth Chris. They earned the dinner. They gave me some really good insights on some marketing stuff. And uh, so, yeah, another dinner is in the making. All right. Let's get to what we're here for. Episode right. 39. What are we talking about? We're going to talk about online courses. You know, we've talked about it on and on. And, and I do want to be a live horse to get more out of it. Uh, like I said before, because of you and other young people like you, you guys got me to take my stuff, which is pen and pencil, and put it online. And it's just amazing the power of an online course. And we want you guys to get that. Now, I guess here's my question. You know, from old school perspective, you hear the word, it's on the cloud. And I, I'm looking up and some days I don't see no clouds, man. <laughs> so what in the, what is that saying to us? This is on an off-site server. Okay. That you can access via the internet. Okay. So like a lot of people park their online servers on Kajabi. Okay. On Teachable. Okay, I I've got I've seen you. some do uh, private Facebook groups and do it as units. I'm with you now. Okay. So, yeah, it's just somewhere where you can access it. Well, you know how you used to buy stuff back in the day 
uh, you know, late at night, they'll ship the tapes. Yeah. Or ship the CDs. They're not still doing that, brother? No, no. Oh, man, I, where have I been? <laughs> <laughs> now they send you a link or a yeah. login to you. access it on the cloud. On the cloud, wow. Yeah, yeah. And I'm assuming it's safe and secure and everything? Yeah, yeah. it's safe and secure. Um, and again, it's able to, the, the, the biggest thing about it, most of the time, unless it's time released, mm -hmm. you can access it at your own pace. I got you. So, you, I mean, you don't have to watch. Well, I guess you could access the tapes at your own pace too, but yeah. um, by being on a cloud, I get immediate access. I don't have to wait three weeks to ship in. Or, I like that. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that we actually, because you know, Amazon's in that business. Mm -hmm. So we've actually been using Amazon about the last four or five years, and it's incredible. And the storage capacity, used to be a time you had limits, yeah. but it's like we keep putting stuff on. And I think we probably have, I'm going to throw out a number, about 500 lessons and my bill is less than five dollars a month. Wow, <laughs> wow! I still can't believe that. That is just amazing. That is amazing. But yeah, man, a lot of that's that's how a lot of the companies mm -hmm. are making money by having these you know servers. Yeah, yeah. They host they host all the information. I, I love that, man. Go go. Now you mentioned the word a little while ago on demand. See again, old school way, man. We used to have watch a program and get all excited. They said and more next week. Here's an episode. Uh, so we're waiting a week. Okay, man. I can't wait to. For back in the day when I first got married, you guys ever heard Dallas? Dallas. Wow, well, I can't believe yeah. these guys. Y'all. Oh man, got J.R. Ewing. No. Oh, my God. See, back in the 80s, guys, Dallas was the hot program. It came on Friday nights at 10 o'clock. It was tough, man. Oh, beautiful. And our show, and it always leads you to the next week. You had to wait. So what's this on-demand with online courses? Hey, just like Netflix, man. You, they put a whole season up. You can binge watch it all night. The yeah. online course, you can consume it all. Mm -hmm. You know, at your own leisure, if you have the time, you know, in that time span that the course allows. So, again, it's not like going to a seminar, then you got to wait to the next month yeah. to the speaker come back in town. Or, I mean, just with technology, it's made it so that you can get it on that cloud on demand. Yeah. As long okay. as it's not a time release or, I gotcha. you know, they, they, they're live, they're doing it live. Like they made, like, you know, we deal with masters, our first yeah. You, our first time around, we recorded everything live and we did it every other week. Right, that's true. That's true. But once you get it all recorded, the man. The man. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we've taken the approach again, old school, because sometimes our listeners, probably 70% of our clientele, as far as our online course, is probably 40 plus. So we've tried to do a mixture of on demand, because we know young people and older people like it too. And something whereby it's time release because we want people to take time to study. Now, do you find out when things are on demand that people rush through them and don't study them as well? Nah, I think it, it's a well for me. I can only speak from my personal experience. Normally, when it's on demand, I skip to what I need. OK, I may not listen to the introductory and, you know, log. Here's how you access <clears throat> the Facebook group. Like, let me get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm looking for while I purchase this product. Um, I don't think you find that people skip through it. I think you find that people kind of go quickly and then normally there's a support group attached to the you. course and that, that they can go to that support group and get help with what they don't understand, miss or you. struggling with. I got you. And what we've done instead of having like a support group, we do online supports, whether it be conference calls and webinars. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that when people go through the course, they have questions. So we do allow unlimited email as well as as a family will come together. And if people have already done the courses, it really makes answering the questions a lot easier. And you can tell what people have done the courses, the, the, the amount of questions and the, mm -hmm. the content of their questions changes. Yeah, they do. They do. And, you know, you often talk about MVP, which is later on here. But uh, when I think about that, you really have to know your audience. Mm -hmm. You really do. Because if, if I'm targeting my millennials, I'm probably going to have 99% on demand. I mean, yeah. that's just it. Yeah. But if I'm targeting boomers, for the most part, I may do a 50-50 split. Now, again, what in the world is an MVP? And, 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 and collaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, your most about. valuable prospect. I, I like to sum it up and how I learned is, like, if you can take your ideal client, okay. someone that you would – is your perfect customer who you would love to do business with and then find a hundred of those people. I got so, you. you know, somebody that pays you what you want and, you know, yeah. does, yeah. actually does the work, logs in you. or, yeah. you know, whatever that, that subject matter is, whatever you're teaching, selling, uh, who is your perfect customer? You know, like I know we had the entrepreneurship call the other night and we 
or, um, guy that owns the fish shop was talking. Mm -hmm. And so his perfect customer looked totally different from the massage therapist. That's so true. Perfect customer. But each of them have one, and it's important you identify it because that's the person you want to speak to. That's true. You don't want to speak to the person that, as a, uh, if you're on a fish store that doesn't have a fish tank, mm -hmm. <laughs> never owned a pet, you know, don't know, had never been fishing. You yeah. don't want to waste the time on him. You want to talk to the people that are, are about fish. Yeah, and with him, see, he was doing more, more upscale things. Exactly. So, so, in other words, if I bought a fish tank, I don't want it. I don't know about the name of it. I don't know how big it's going to grow, et cetera. I just want it to look pretty. So I may go to a regular store, but he is for those people who really want to do the deep dive into the history and the mating and reselling of fish and all that other stuff, which to me, I could care less. There's a market out there for it. I got you. I agree. So you got to identify who that person is, how they think, what they like, and then market towards those attributes. I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Now, how important is relationship marketing? You, you've used that term before. I mean, th there's a lot of great information. There's a lot of real estate stuff out there. Yeah. So how does relationship marketing come into play if I'm going to succeed on my online courses? People buy from who they know, like, and trust. Okay. And that's okay. that's relationship. Yeah, and you think about it, man. In most any environment okay. industry <laughs> the people that show the most mm -hmm. normally have the larger audience okay like, show the most talk to them show, show the most like the people that just like let you in on what they're doing i got you yeah so guys I that are you. constantly doing stuff on instagram youtube facebook like their stories they're constantly showing you what they're doing okay. you feel like you're a part of them almost i got you yeah and that that's how that relationship starts because you feel like you know the person because yeah, I see him, point. I see his wife, I see his kids, I see that's the deals he's working on. I see he went to close in a day. I see he did this, he did that. I mean, you feel like you know that person. I like that, you know. And, you know, old school way, things were done so private. <laughs> now that, that's considered arrogance in my generation. You know, we thought that if you educate and empower people, which is needed, but in your generation, sure, I want to be empowered. I want to be educated, but I want to know you, the person. Yeah, and that's something people that you, you Xers and Boomers guys, we got to get that people. We got to open our lines up and let people see the good and the bad to know that we're real live human beings. Yeah, reality TV changed the game. Uh, I don't even mm -hmm. think it was social media per se, more so than reality TV, because you you started to get like in, inside of people's lives. That is so true. Good, the bad, and the ugly. And, I mean, that's what draws the most eyeballs. I got you. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Now, I know y'all remember this. Now, the first reality TV show I remember in my generation, it wasn't maybe about 20 years ago now, was Big Brother. No, they had reality TV before Big they Brother. They did? Well, who was before Big Brother? Real World. MTV. Oh, well, see, I, that's another channel for me. But anyway, see how I'm learning something new? <laughs> learning something new. Yep. I got you. All right. Hey, I got two more points here I want to run by you because you're the online courts too. Now, you talk about receipts. And I mean, I'm talking about receipts for taxes, man. Here's no, my tax receipt. No. I bought dinner last night. Man, here's my receipt yeah, to yeah. Ruth Chris for four hundred dollars. Three people, four hundred dollars. These guys can eat, but it was good. You it ordered good. all them appetizers, man. Uh huh. I know. <laughs> Tell them who, who ate them though. Mm hmm. We who, all did. Who, who was licking the plate? Somebody. Somebody. Took their four and a half star restaurant. Somebody's finger went in the bowl and went. That wasn't called about his name. It wasn't me. I'm called about me because he's behind the camera. I think <laughs> behind the camera. <laughs> receipt. What receipts and why? Man, I mean, people talk a lot about what they do, but if you're showing them what you do, okay. again, in real estate, you know, showing HUD statements is yeah. showing receipts, showing that you're actually closing deals and you're getting paid. You know, I got you. Um, a lot of people. That's where it can get to the arrogance and the flashiness. Like okay. if I'm, you know, showing all my jewelry, cars, houses, mm -hmm. things like that. But if I'm sticking to like the meat and potatoes of what I do, if I'm in real estate and I'm showing you, hey, I bought this house. Hey, I closed this house. I'm flipping this house. I'm showing you the progress of the house. I got you. That can be the receipt more so than you flashing money or, you know, going on vacation or, you know, the results of it. Like, if I show you, hey, this is the result of hey, I just sold this house. Here's the hood statement. I'm at the closing table. Here's my attorney. You know, people do that all the time, but you also get the. The flashy side of it where, you know, we own a, a yacht in Miami, whatever, you know. Which is probably rented at least. <laughs> oh, definitely rented. <laughs> yeah. But but you make a good point because, but, again. And but, receipts are important. So, like, Danielle Leslie, she taught me. I joined her course. I won't say she taught me one-on-one -on -one how to start a course in 90 days or less. Her receipts are all her customers who started a course and made money. I like that. And she has thousands yeah. of people that she's helped do all kind of courses 
online and those are her receipts the results of her work hey she says she can get you to start a course in 90 days or less mm -hmm. here's the example time and time and time and time yeah, again i got you never once did she look at my new manhattan apartment or whatever she's hey look at this person they started a course and made forty thousand dollars in 90 days they started a course and made this thirty thousand dollars in two weeks i just got an email from her last night somebody did that i got you <laughs> it's real guys that's the receipt i love it yeah love it. hey my final thought here you know we talk about becoming the expert how with with all the voices out there with all the flash out there with all the people out there how in the world do you show them that I am the man, I am the expert, I am the one? The receipts are part of it, but okay. like Nike said, just doing the work. Okay. You know, if you're the expert, you know, the fruit should show mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. You know, if you're out there doing the deals or starting the courses or helping yeah. people save money, helping people in the stock market, yeah. the receipts should show for it. That's you. how you show you the expert. A lot of people can read and teach and talk, mm -hmm. but the expert is actually doing it. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's different, you know, if, if you go to a basketball camp and, you know, Isaiah is leading the camp. Mm -hmm. If I go to CP3 camp and he there, it's going to hit a little different. I got you. You're right. You know, I got you. That's the, that's the bottom line, showing what you do. That's yeah. how you make yourself the expert. And I think the other thing, too, stands in my mind is showing those receipts, but also taking the seemingly complex subject matter and simplifying it. What a person says, I can do that. Yeah. And when a person believes they can do it because they've seen you do it and you've made it step one, step two, step three, I think that's another key thing in being that expert. I agree because you can make any transaction, anything complicated. It's true. That but is if so you can true. dumb it down or simplify it enough where you know, a third grader can understand it, that's how you know you got something. I got you. Good deal. Yeah. Well, guys, I'm all finished for the day, man, and getting ready for podcast number 40, man, okay. next week. Number 40. Are you ready? I'm, I'm ready, brother. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's my Thanksgiving special edition. So let you and the family enjoy it together. Excellent, man. That wraps up episode 39. I'm your host, Council Glenn. Hey, William V. Thompson. <laughs>